Talk season two, episode four. Hi, hi everybody. We'll be talking today about uh, a protection plan of sorts. Uh, we talked in our last episode of the Next Generation, talking about Joaquin and just uh, really rethinking, uh, upgrading uh, how I raise my daughter and how I talk to her about sex and sexuality as a prevention tool uh, uh, to prevent CSA. Uh, and so we wanted to think about what a protection plan would be because in the beginning before I did my healing and I educated myself My protection plan was kind of outrageous. It was again led through fear and it was pretty much keeping you in my bed Wrapped around my arms away from everybody Terrified that someone was gonna hurt you and at the same time terrified that I was gonna hurt you so it was just my if we're thinking about like our our spiritual energy and our vibration uh, my vibration was very very low and so I'm trying to do this next generation with my vibration very very high um, with knowledge and edu educating myself and just getting better about how I raised Mandy uh, so when we say protection plan like what does that consist of like so how do you think about like how to protect him in terms of like um, even even if I'm taking care of him or if a chosen family member is taking care of him or when he eventually goes into child care. What does well, that look like? I, w I thought about it. And like for now, what I can say is because he's not speaking, mm -hmm. you know, that's not an easy thing to try to teach to him. But when he does start to speak, I'm going to definitely tell him that if anything feels uncomfortable or if he doesn't like something that he just to say no as strongly as he can you know like just to make sure that he always speaks up and mm -hmm. speaks to me mm -hmm. because i have to be the advocate for him as the adult and as his parent um so i would i because i'm like there's so many i'm and i try to do this without fear as well because i'm just like mm -hmm. i don't want him to be like don't touch me don't touch me you know like i want him <laughs> I want him to understand the difference between this feels uncomfortable right, or this right. is okay or you know I'm not sure and either way to be able to talk to me about it so I can help him work through these feelings or questions or whatever but what I'm thinking about too is like okay so that's a piece of it right because like him having knowledge right and especially now since he cannot speak you know he's communicating through body language and things but he cannot speak so how do we integrate, you know, like we talked about bystanders in the last episode, because there's many people around that see things and stuff, right? So how do we talk to other people rather than, I think that some people put it all on kids. Like if something happens, tell me, you know, you can talk to me about anything, right? So I think that's a piece of it, but like, what is a protection plan that incorporates adults? Like, you know, um, I know that I would definitely tell that my chosen family and blood family that you know the the slogan they have in new york if you see something say something um i hate that thing <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> it's because they know that new yorkers mind their business so much that we're just like oh, i ain't see nothing so but i want to make sure that it's not only in his hands or only in my hands because it does take a village to raise a child and he has a humongous community and circle of people that love him very much so i want everyone to be a part of his safety and his growth um, so I would right. definitely ask people, um, that, you know, they're, uh, they're aware they're paying attention and that they're also relaying things to me, whether they think it's trivial or not, you know? Um, so I want to, I want to go back to something. I want to go back to the, see something, say something. And then I want to go back to like pushing you further in terms of specifics, right? Because like really getting to the, the nitty gritty of what a protection plan could look like for Joaquin. And I, and I wanna you know participate in that, but thinking about the see something, say something, I said, I hate that, because we all know where that started after 9-11. And it really, uh, it's really about um, 
um, uh, surveillance, you know, like us surveilling, seeing other people and then um, calling the cops if we see something. And it, and it really sparked and honed in on our fears, right? The fear of what happened at 9-11 so that we can tell on other people. And really what it does is it helps to continue like um, racial and cultural profiling because people see, oh, that person looks suspicious and we get to kind of, you know, uh, make assumptions a lot of the time. So I, I mention that because one, um, for me, it, and when I think about a protection plan, it's about um, involving community that does not incorporate the police. Like um, two, it is about um, giving a very concrete and specific um, information about how you want your child cared for and what in the boundaries that you create around your child because I think a lot of people don't do that I think that we assume that people has our children's best interests at heart and it's like here take care of my child here's the bottles here are the diapers here are the wipes they you know they have nap time this time they eat that time really like just the the bare minimal right not like what your rules are about bath time about changing diapers, about other people in the home or other people watching, oh, holding, yes, yes. and taking care of your child. Like, it's like, for me, it's about really getting specific okay. because afterwards, that's the preventative piece, right? Because what we're working on is the reactionary piece after something happens. Like, oh, my friend took care of my child. And then later I found out that her boyfriend was in the house and they might have had some intimate time in the next room or something like that, oh, right? Oh, yeah, so, okay. So, like, r very okay. specific things. Like, what would you not want to happen when someone's taking care of walking? So, for me, um, definitely, I would be a, a no, no bath situation. Um, if it had to, it would have to be, like, an extreme, like, his diaper exploded up the back and he needed a bath. But other than that, I would like to be the only one, you know, bathing him or having extended, you know time when he's nude mm -hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense um also if the person that i'm asking to watch him has a significant other or a friend around of course you know there would be no drinking smoking drug use um if they're watching something on tv nothing explicit or inappropriate because he's a sponge he's very observant mm -hmm. and i don't want him to see things he's not supposed to see yet um mm -hmm. I would also say that that person that I asked to watch my child would be the only one dealing with them. You know, diapers, right. food, everything like that, because I'm entrusting that specific person. I'm not saying you and your boyfriend, you and your cousin, mm -hmm. you and your friend. Um, definitely, you know, the washing of hands constantly, <laughs> be sanitary. Um, and if, you know, you guys are being intimate or whatever, make sure it's a way I don't want him to be hearing or seeing any of that because I feel like that's also because some people just do stuff in front of kids and they don't think that it affects them or that it's abuse. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a form of abuse having like, I, for example, um, again, on Facebook, there was a video that showed this couple having sex and then somebody was like filming from outside because they showed in the corner that they had their baby in a, a chair and the baby's just watching. Mm. And that just... I, I had so many feelings about that and that right. in my eyes that's abuse and I would never ever subject him to watching me and somebody or having some watching somebody else engage in anything sexual right. um, and I would definitely you know don't you know and if you know like because you know everybody knows somebody that's a little unsavory or you know a little out there or something I would prefer those people not to be around him because mm -hmm. um, I'm not there to you know to monitor to watch to right. be his protector to shield him his filter for stuff so i would definitely you know limit the amount of people who are in and out around him so to me this is like so i see this because i like i love lists and i write things down just to me i see this as a protection plan or if we, or just you know we don't have to call it a protection plan we can call it like these are my guidelines these are my boundaries this is what it takes uh for you to take care of my child successfully these are this is what i want right because as guardians as parents as caregivers that is our right our right is to create the parameters now i also know that there are many people who do not have choices and who takes care of their children because they don't have resources they don't have money that maybe the neighborhood lady that has taken care of all the children um, is the one taking care of your child. Um, and in this, those instances, again, uh, we still can create 
um, a list or a boundary um, contract conversation. Because I think what it does is that it shows the person um, what you're thinking about, how serious you are about this, um, what um, the guidelines that you would prefer. And I think it also starts like this accountability thing, right? Like, these are the things I want. I want you to tell me what you can agree upon. Let's have a discussion, right? Um, and if these things don't happen, then it can start an accountability process, right? Uh, for what could happen afterwards. And I know that this can be very limiting, again, when you don't have the resources, um, but we gotta start somewhere. We gotta start with not feeling, oh, I'm asking for too much. I'm it's gonna never be, too much. I'm it's gonna sound child. like a burden if I, you know, ask for this and- No. And I think, um, yeah, cause like when you were little, I was very clear, depending on how old you were, because no one took care of you, really, until, I don't know, <laughs> probably until you were like... Five, maybe? <laughs> maybe five. Like, I had Speaking cousins age. cousins and things like that, like, watch you for, you know, several hours and, you know, um, you know, yeah, probably for several hours and things. I don't think we did overnight until later, later on, because I was just too terrified. But even then, I remember, like, for instance, when you were... So we talked about like a, a nonverbal child, right? So like all of these things, writing these things down, sharing with, with the person, telling them where that comes from, asking if they agree to it, um, that it's accountability thing. And that means that you're communicating consistently with that person yes. and checking in on those things, not just thinking, okay, I said it, boom, they're good, right? It's about really checking in again about those uh, things. Yes, um, video message me, text me, send right. me pictures, call me, it's like back blow me up. Yeah, I'm, I tell people like, don't ever worry about bothering me. You can call me every five right. minutes if you want, as long as he's okay. And then when you were, you know, of school age and, and things, and you wanted to like have sleepovers or have friends come over, I know for a fact um, before she, you know, was allowed to, she was allowed to sleep over anyone's house. I needed to go over to that house. I needed to meet the parents. I needed to know who was there. Right. And again, that's also coming from a privileged point, right? That went up until I was in middle school too. Like, who are you going with? Do their parents know? I need their phone numbers. What's their address? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it also shows the parents like how invested I am in my care, safety, yeah. right? So that they're thinking, oh wait, you know, their mother called and they wanted to know about this thing. So they're really checking extra on that thing. And part of it was like no R-rated movies, no movies about murder and things like that. Um, and you were not allowed to play with any toys that had to do with guns or grenades or anything like that. I did not want I that. <laughs> um, so I was very specific about the toys she can play with, the movies that she can watch, um, who could interact with her, who could go to the bathroom with her around bath time, like she's old enough to take her own bath or she doesn't have to take a bath here. She can do it when she gets home. Yeah. You know, so it's like really thinking specifically, like it's like really breaking it down in our minds to think about how are the ways that my child will interact with an adult or other children, right? Because we're talking specifically about adults now, um, but there are also other young people and children in the mix. And that's when, you know, as our children get older and, sp and are talking, this is when we're talking to them about how we interact and agency and, and um, you know, the ability to say no or the ability to say or um, that something feels wrong or is wrong um, to communicate with the parents. So I, I just keep thinking that we have to like break it down, like literally. Yeah, like, point by point. Yeah, what is it? What, where are the opportunities? You know, like uh, what if um, the person who's taking care of your child says, yeah, I'm gonna go to the park. We're gonna go out to the park, you know, Okay, so what other things are involved with going to the park? Watching everybody else, watching everyone <laughs> else's kid, making sure they're within eye shot, ear shot, making sure like, you know, like you have to pay attention because those are places where it's easy for kids to just disappear or they're running off with their friends somewhere or somebody can be there to try to lure them away. There's so many things that can happen. You're in an open space. Right. It's different when you're in a confinement of a home. Right, so what does that look like? How many children are going with you? Do you have someone else that's helping? Um, where is this part like is your you phone know, charged? I like... feel like I was like probably felt annoying to people But I actually did not care because I had peace of mind and asking those questions and if ever Mandy had a friend come over to the house It'd be the same thing. I wouldn't let them come if I didn't talk to the parent and and a lot of times unfortunately Parents did not talk to, you know, like that wasn't their inclination. They didn't they didn't say oh, let me talk to this person um, They they come over I said did you talk to your mom? 
Oh, uh, she said it was fine, and I said, like, "Well, I haven't talked to her, so I need to yeah, like, have what's a conversation your phone with mom or dad or grandma or auntie, and say, you know, this is who I am. This is where I live. This is my cell phone. This is what we have planned with the kids today. What time do you want them in? What are they allergic to? What can they eat and cannot? Eat? I mean, I had many things that I was talking about, you know, and I was." Um, at one point, I felt like I was so shocked that parents didn't do that. But I also understand, again, you know, we got parents working two, three jobs and stuff. And someone says, hey, we have a play date. It feels great. It's like a little vacation. But in those moments of vacation, we still have to be thinking about the well-being of our children. Because yes. I know how difficult and time-consuming um, and just hard, it, how it, you know, hard to raise one child. I can't even imagine if you Multiples. have two and three children right so i'm thinking about all of these things but i i believe that just thinking these things through uh, uh, beginning with thinking these things through uh, really is beneficial um in, in a lot of ways for both of you yeah because i know like he is my most cherished well possession you know i don't own him <laughs> but he's the most important person in my entire world my whole existence is for him so i'm just like I I would love to be that annoying parent because he's that important to me that I want to make sure he is safe and he is happy and he's loved and he's being comforted and he's with good people in a good environment and he's mm -hmm. healthy. Everything that benefits him benefits me. Yeah. So I want to make sure that he's good. So right. I will be that annoying parent. I don't care. <laughs> I don't I'm care. also thinking about like, uh, I remember like when people, I would try to talk to people about how I wanted you to be cared for and they were like, I've done this before. I, I know I've raised this many kids, and but you didn't people raise take my it kid. exactly. People <laughs> take it like personally, and it's like I totally understand that. And this has nothing to do with whether you're a good or bad parent. This is my parenting, and this is my child, and this is what I want to happen. You know, it's not if you're comfortable with this, do this. It's like this is the way I want things, right? And um, yeah, and that's hard. That's actually really hard to do, I think, when we are just wanting to be grateful that somebody wants to have, you know, play date with our children or take care of them when um, child care is so expensive. Oh, my God. Um, and, you know, we don't have a lot of people jumping, you know, up to be like, I'll take care of your kid for a couple of hours. So we get that. Um, and I, I totally understand that because, you know, when Mandy was little, you know, we were on welfare and at, in the beginning we were homeless uh, for a little while. So. I totally get the small pickings sometimes, but even with those small pickings, I think that you can develop uh, a deeper um, relationship with folks, whether it is, you know, having phone calls here and there, just to, I think that, it, it, we talked about the deep connection with parent and child or caregiver and child, but we also have to be really having that communication and connection with people who are taking care of our children as well, um, because it, sh it really, it changes the dynamic um, rather than dropping a child off is different than dropping a child off to someone that you have cons you know continually had connection with and c communication with and up you know like uh, uh, checked in about those boundaries and see if any of those have shifted uh, new ones have come up so forth and so on you know that's why like I, as a caregiver myself i try really hard to have relationships with all the parents of the kids that i watch in whatever mm. preschool daycare setting that i have i try to be friends with them because i'm like i like now being on the other side i understand mm. why they're just like there's this it is this it is this it is this it is this, it is this, it is this. and i'm just like i get it this is your baby this is your everything your world this is the most important person so you want to make sure that things are done correctly um and you want them to be comfortable so i try to you know make sure that i let them know or you know i leave little notes on the daily report or i talk to them after or i give them my number you know so i always let them know you know i'm on your side and we're both working together to make sure that your kid is taken care of the proper way you know and they're safe yeah so i'm wondering out there you know like what kind of protection plans have you put in place um Anything that we missed, let us know for sure. Um, and for a different age groups, you know, that, that shifts a lot as well. So let, let's, you know, like think about what, who your children interact with. I know when you got older as a teenager, my, a piece of that was, I would say, who are your friends? Who are your, you know, the people that you consider your best friends and you hang out with? I had a list of those names and their telephone numbers. I needed to know all of the things. <laughs> I remember you used to be like, oh, my God, like, why are you asking me this? And I'm like, if anything ever happens to you, I know exactly who to call. 
Like I need to check in with these people, right? I needed to know what you wore out the house every single day. I needed to see you, lay eyes on you, even if you were going to school and I didn't have to get up to go to work, right? So it's those little things that really make a, a difference. difference. Yeah. It really does. So I'd love to hear from people out there around what a protection plan could possibly look like. You know, we're, per, you know, we're perfecting this as we go along. This is a, a learning a, growing process. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we need to be talking about this because if we are actually doing real prevention, we need to be, uh, you know, like active, um, active and, and intentionally like interacting with these conversations and these, you know, very fearful uh, topics um, and, you know, balance it with not putting fear and horror into our children as we're caring for them. And also have this growing process and conversations with the children once they get speaking age. Yes, he's <laughs> so sleepy. He has such a hard life being adorable. <laughs> but having these conversations with your children is half of the battle. You know, yeah, it's very important to include them in it. So mm -hmm. they're, they're aware of their own safety and they're complicit in their own, Absolutely. you know, safety. Because they shouldn't just, you know, they should know that they have the autonomy to be like, yeah. I don't like this. I'm uncomfortable. This person did this. I said this, you know, and be able to tell you, you believe them and, you know, right. you move forward. You, you brought up a good point, too, in terms of, like, when the kids go to other places, especially when they're of, you know, they are able to communicate, whether they're speaking or signing, you know, like, um, checking in with them, you know, not just checking in with the adults that took care of them, checking in with them and having a conversation afterwards. How was that? Um, did you feel comfortable there? You know, like what happened? Tell us about yes, it. Yes, because I know like what I was saying before about all these these horrible instances where these kids are getting abused at daycare centers. The parents ask the teachers and they're all like, oh, I don't know what happened. Oh, I don't know. Everything was fine. I didn't see that. That must have mm -hmm. happened outside. And then it's like, but then if you ask the kid, the kid will be like, actually, this is what happened. Right, so, right. you know, yeah, it's good to be able to speak to them and have them trust you and be comfortable enough to tell you these things. Right. So an ongoing process the protection plan for our wonderful children um yeah so let us know you know you can email us at the uh, pure love talks at gmail.com check out the youtube channel pure love talks or you can go to my website igrivera.com and click on pure love thank you so much for engaging with us and really we'd like to hear what your protection plan is remember like comment subscribe share give us all the information ask all the questions we're here for it all right. Thank you. Bye. Walking says bye too. <laughs>